If, uh, on, on this problem, we have essentially a few tables. There's one from point A to B. Then you have one from, from point A to C. There's another one running from point A to D. And then these three tables are supporting a weight which is 500 pounds. So this problem is going to determine the force and each table. So that's the question we are working on and First thing we do is we look at each of these tables. So we have the table AB. Then let's say we have the table AC. Then we have the table AD. Then the weight by itself will cause at this point a force of 500 pounds. And we already know that these cables should be in tension. So if that's in tension, as well as this is in tension. And I'm going to make the assumption that the unknown magnitude are given by PAB then PAC as well as PAD. So these are the three unknown magnitudes for the forces and tables AB, AC, and AD. So in the part we have drawn, we have a force of PAB, and there's going to be another force at the other end to balance backwards. Then you will have a force PAC, then there's going to be another force to balance backwards. Then there will be an additional force here, the PAD, there will be a force as PAD. Then there is a small part of cable here, and to balance that force, you will have another force the exact same magnitude as 500 pounds. Uh, let's call this an W. So those are the forces in different components. Then they all meet at point A. So if I 
the free body diagram of point A. Then at point A, there will be a force because of this table attachment, and we're going to call that force as PAB. And if you use the vector notation for that, then there's another force because of the attachment AC, and we call that as PAC. And there's another force because of the cable AD, and we call that as PAD. Then this part of the cable, if I would have drawn it here, and if I say this was W, and this also going to be intention, you have another force going like this. And both of them will be same magnitude. So in here, you have a force going in the P direction. I'm just going to call this as W. So at point A, you have these four forces. And if the point A was in the equilibrium, then I could write the resultant force P A B plus P A C plus P A D plus the force W it should all add up to zero. And that's what becomes the condition of equilibrium. So with that is what you need to work with and you need to write every force in vector form. So the force W, that's the weight, it has a magnitude of five hundred. It's going in the C direction. We're gonna choose this axis as X, this as Y, this as C. So if it is going down and the opposite is Z, catch a negative sign and multiply it by the unit factor along the C axis. So that's one fourth, then we need TAB. <coughs> then we also need TAC, then we we'll also need T. A B. All of these forces are needed. And if I look at the forces, then we already said that this magnitude was not known, this magnitude was not known, as well as this magnitude was not known. And what we do know is the direction of these forces. And when I say we know the direction, that means we should be able to write unit vectors along this direction, along this direction, as well as this direction. So I could say that the TAB has the unknown magnitude times a unit vector going from A to B. I could say the same thing here. You have the known magnitude and the unit vector going from a to C. Same thing here. Again, we have unknown magnitude times a unit vector going from point A to B. So this is the TAB. Then take the position vector from point A to B and you divide it by its length. Same thing is going to happen here. You'll have T. AC and you get AC divided by length. Same thing with the third one. You have T AD and then you take the vector going from A to D, you divide by length. So all of these forces we are working with, they are similar to case three. Where you had the 
magnitude, which happen to be unknown, then you have coordinates of two points along the direction of the force. And you need the coordinates of point, of point A, then you need the coordinates of point B, you need the coordinates of point C, and this is point D, you will need the coordinates of point D. A is the origin, if x A goes to 0, y A goes to 0, and v A goes to 0. So that gives you the coordinates of point A. Then for B, you need x B, and B is, I mean, it's in the, I mean, one of the lengths, you're looking at the length along the x axis, that's going to be the length, except it's in opposite of x axis. So that's going to go negative 3, then you need y b, and same thing happens with the y coordinate, your distance is in the negative y direction, you have negative 6, then it goes up by 6 feet, your c b becomes 6. Then we look at c, we have x of c, again the x coordinate is 2, except it's negative, then you have y c, and the coordinate is positive, and then you have g c, going up to that positive thing. Then we go to the d, and this length was given here, it was given as 5 feet. So, it's on the x-axis, so we're looking at x d, which is 5, we're looking at y d, that's 0, and we're looking at c d, that's also 0. So those are the coordinates of point A, B, C, and D. Then, we have P, A, B. We need the vector A, B. Or, I'm going to take the coordinates of point B, and I subtract the coordinates from the coordinates of point A. So in this case, A is all zeros. So, there's not going to be any difference. So, 3 with the negative, and an i plus you have negative 6 with a j plus you have 6 of k. So, so you took this minus this, this minus this, and this minus this. And uh, so they're all zeros, so it doesn't change uh, the actual number. Then you have square root minus three squared, minus six squared, and positive of six squared. We do the same thing with THC. This time you're going to take this set of numbers, you're going to subtract that with this set of numbers, and what you get is you get negative 2i plus 3j plus 6k. Then you have the square root, now you're going to have negative 2 square, 3 square, and 6 square. So that's T A C, then we have T A D. This one is going to be 5i plus 0j plus 0k. Then you have the square root, that will be 5 square plus 0 square and no 0 square. So this here is in square root 81 
that should be a 9. So the first force will be 3 over 9 TAB times I. Then we have negative 6 over 9 TAB J. Then we have 6 over 9 TAB and K. Then the second force, this part here, give us the 36 and 45 plus uh, 49. So this should be 7. So that's 2 over 7. That's the coefficient. PAC, then you have I. Then you have 3 over 7, PAC and a J plus 6 over 7, PAC and K. Then we go to the last one. The bottom is 5 and 5 and 5 gets cancelled. And you get this 1 times CAD times I plus 0 times. TAD times J plus 0 times TAD times K. So that gives us the three forces, which means we found this force in Cartesian vector form, we found this force in Cartesian vector form, and we found this force in Cartesian vector form. And we already know. This one here in vector form. Now, what we need to do is to take, um, and let's call this as one, this one as two, this one as three, and this one here as four. So, this equation has four forces, so we need all those four forces. Now, we're going to take all those four forces and add all those together. So, if you add that, it's going to be a long equation, and you can avoid that by looking at the coefficient. So, what I could do is, I could say that I want to sum all the x components. Because when you add all those, you get the coefficients with the i, then you get coefficients with the j, and you get coefficients with k. So what we will do is we're going to skip a step, and you just take all the x components from here. So what you get is you get c over 9, c, a, b, that's for the first equation. Then you have plus negative 2 over 7. TAC plus TAD. So that's all the coefficients which are with I. And we know that these should add up to zero. Then we take all the coefficients with J. So now we're going to look at this. That's 6 over 9. T A B, then we have three seven T A C. So here there's nothing coming from T A D with zero. There's nothing in the fourth equation, so that should go to zero. Then you gonna sum a V force in C direction, or you're gonna look at the C component. We have this one here. So that's 6, 9, C, A, B. Then we have 6, 7, T, A, C. There's 0 here for T, A, D. But we have this with K. So that's another negative 500. And this should go to 0. So you notice that instead of writing that long equation, what I did is, 
I just took the x component, added all those together, and that went to zero. Then we did the same thing with the y component. We added those, and we set that to zero. And we did the same thing with c component. So it's a lot easier to directly write this equation from here than using this equation. And it's taking every force, creating a long equation, and then collecting all the coefficients of the i, j, and k, and then setting up those equations to zero. So you can skip that step and you can go directly from these equations one, two, three, and four, and come up with these three equations. And I call this as a, as a, I call this as p, I call this as c. So there are three equations, and you have three unknowns. <laughs> you have this one as unknown, you have this one as unknown, and you have this one as unknown. So you could use the second equation, and you could write p a b as with the three seven multiplied by nine six and p a c. Then you're going to substitute this in here. Then you solve for TAC. Once you have TAC, you're back here. You solve for TAB. So by using this equation and this equation, you solve for TAC and TAB. Then we're going to go on the third equation. You already know this. You know this. You solve for PAB. And that should give you all the three forces you need in this particular problem. And if you go through the actual calculations, then your forces, it's a PAB. That should come out to be 250 pounds, and that's the tension which came out as positive. Then you're going to have PAC, that's going to be 389 pounds, and that should be in tension because that came out positive. Then you're going to have PAD, and that's going to be 194 pounds. They came out positive, and that also remains in tension. So, if you recall, we started this problem, we made the assumption that every cable was in tension. So, when you went through all the calculations, then every number is going to come out positive. So, if it comes out positive, that means you don't need to change anything with respect to your original assumption. Now I'm going to look at another problem, and this is going to be 